Anyone can master card counting if you put the time into it, but to truly make money, you have to get the hours in at the tables. As a former professional card counter and blackjack team manager, I'm gonna share with you my top advice for avoiding detection in a casino so you can maximize your career as a card counter. One of our members at Blackjack Apprenticeship recently shared a story of playing at a casino where he's been counting cards for years and another card counter sat down at his table. It was no surprise to him that in less than an hour, this player got backed off from the casino. This guy was playing perfectly, but he was doing everything wrong as far as how to not be so obvious to the casino. Imagine you want to be a professional poker player. You can read every book on poker. You can have pot odds down and all the mathematics of the game and be disciplined about when to play your hand and when to fold. But if you have no poker face and everyone else at the table can read you like a book, you're simply not gonna make it as a poker pro. To be a professional blackjack player, you have to know how to act like a professional. And this guy had no act. He was a complete robot at the table. Yes, the mathematics of card counting is important. You have to perfect your game, but there is also an art side. And if you do not master the art of card counting, you're not going to get hours in at the tables. But how do we act in a casino to not be so obvious? There was a casino that my blackjack team used to play regularly at, and their game was average, but they were incredibly tolerant. I won over 150,000 at that one casino and our team profited half a million dollars there. I used to play at this casino two nights a week and they would welcome me with open arms until one night when I won $32,000. Then everything changed. The next time I show up, the phones are ringing off the hook, everybody's talking about me, and it was the beginning of the end of my time at that casino. Nothing puts you on a casino's radar like a big win. A friend of mine who's been a professional card counter for six years was telling me that he recently spotted a complete gambler in a high limits room in Las Vegas get backed off simply because he was winning too much. His game was terrible, there's no way he was a professional, but the casino just panicked because this guy was winning. Does that mean we should lose intentionally? Hell no, the margins are so small at card counting, we would never give money back to the casino intentionally. But what it does mean is that every casino has a threshold. Maybe it's $1,000, maybe it's five, 10 or $20,000, but there's a point where you are going to be on their radar because of a single night's win. I've had it verified to me by casino surveillance professionals and casino managers that casinos do have a dollar amount where it becomes a mandatory review of a person's play. So if you win, say $10,000 in a night, they have to review the tapes and figure out if it was just luck or if you were an AP. It's up to you to gauge where that limit is, but you can probably make an educated guess based on the amount of action that you see at the tables. And if you happen to know where that threshold is, your goal is to leave before you hit that point. We're at the casino to win big, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying limit your profits, but I'm saying you're better off to win $10,000 over three nights than to win it in one night. If I could go back in time to that session where I won 32,000, I would have left sooner because I could always go back and generate EV the next day, but this was a local casino where six figures to my family and those places are hard to come by. What about big bets? Should you bet less to avoid heat? That's a double-edged sword. Betting smaller means less EV and my goal is not to spend twice as much time in the casino to make the same amount of EV. So I'm not a big fan of betting less across the board. My rule of thumb is how important is this casino to me? My friend and BJA member JC Rocks 111 had a casino that he could literally walk to that had one of the best blackjack games in the country. He also had the bankroll to exploit their game. So he put together a bet spread that took advantage of the casino's low house edge and limited his top bet in order to shear the sheep rather than skin it. JC Rocks 111 shared with us on our podcast about how he beat this local casino for over $100,000 plus another $100,000 in comp value before the casino finally put an end to it for him. I was only playing double deck games and with good pin. I would do two spots of 50 to two by 300. Okay. I had to keep my wins smaller Yeah. just for attention, you know. And did you end up in the positive? It was uh, 150,000. They gave me a 2019 Mercedes lease for a year. I went to like a cruise through Europe. We looked up like the retail value is like $14,000 cruise. 
he truly acted like a professional, from bet spread to limiting his wins to rat holing chips, which I'll get into in a minute. We have a member at Blackjack Apprenticeship that's from Thailand, but he got stuck in the US for two years because of COVID. During that time, he played one of his local casinos for an incredible number of hours. He was fortunate that he already had a history as a gambler at this casino, but after mastering card counting, attending one of our boot camps, he went back to the casino and played a thousand hours, winning over $55,000 and still didn't get backed off. One of the smart things he did while playing was making it not so obvious how much he was winning at the casino by rat holing his chips. He would simply take some of the chips off the table when he was winning. But the casinos can sometimes track how much you've won and how many chips you've taken from the table. But when other people are at the tables and they're playing similar denominations as you, it can be really hard for the casino to track who won what amounts and who left with what chips. When he finally was allowed to return to Thailand, he asked the casino what they had on their win-loss statement for him, and they were off by $100,000. They had him as a net loss of over $50,000 when he was a net win of over $50,000. That doesn't even account for over $30,000 worth of comps he got from the casino in the process. Not a month goes by that I don't get an email or a phone call with a new card counter who says, Colin, I was card counting at the casino every night just like you taught me, but after two weeks, they backed me off. If you're going there five, six, seven nights a week, what did you expect? That doesn't mean they're gonna back off every person that goes to a casino five nights a week, but it's definitely gonna keep you from being forgettable. If you can spread your play around multiple casinos and stay forgettable, just a regular gambler showing up to each casino maybe once a week or so, it's gonna help you avoid a lot of heat. Once you start placing certain bets that get you on the casino's radar, here are three things you can do to avoid being Mr. Robot. Spend some time observing gamblers. What are their mannerisms? What do they look and act like? Hall of Fame card counter Stanford Wong told my friend RX Gamble about how he used to wear a big, giant, flashy ring at the tables to make it maybe fit in that he had that kind of money. There's also the classic order a beer and refill it with water move since most card counters just drink water or coffee. Have it look like you're drinking a beer at the table without actually getting drunk at the table. Having a Kino or slot ticket with you at the table, only a gambler does that. If at a quick glance, you look more like a gambler than an AP, that's going to help you get some more time at the tables. Through Blackjack Apprenticeship, I've networked with surveillance and casino managers who will tell you that there are some very low or no cost moves that will make you look much more like a gambler at the table than an advantage player. Because this is a public video and could be watched by casinos as easily as card counters, I'm not gonna get into specifics, but we have some more detailed conversations in our paid members forum if you want to dig deeper into this. What do gamblers say and do at the casino? They celebrate wins, they mourn their losses, they have all these logical fallacies they say like, third base just took the bus card. Another tip is if possible, be likable. The casino will be less likely to suspect you and even if they do, they won't want to back you off. Do you need to be loud and obnoxious? No, you could be the quiet AP that's likable or you could be the loud mouth. Card counters do not win every night every week, every month. When you're losing, make sure the casino knows about it. Hey, pit boss, how much am I in for? 5K, Colin. Damn, don't tell my wife. She's gonna kill me if she finds out. If you can act in a way where they don't jump to the assumption you're an AP, you're going to get far more hours at the table than Mr. Robot. What's practical about me just telling you what to do? How about I show you? In this video, I do everything wrong on purpose and get backed off shortly. Check it out right here.